Today on The Crunch, why it feels like every car is an SUV now and what that means for safety and emissions. Yeah, so we'll get into the data in a sec, but first I did just wanna introduce Noisy Charts, which is a new tool I've developed at The Guardian. So what it does is it maps the chart data to sound frequency, and this then gives you audio and an animated video, which you can use in podcasts or a video series, and it actually makes it much more accessible for people who are vision impaired as well. This chart shows the percentage of new vehicle sales by type in each year. The lowest value for the chart you'll hear is 17.2. The highest value you'll hear is 53.2. Each note is a year and the chart goes from 2012 to 2022. Passenger vehicles. Light commercial, including utes and vans. And now SUVs. I'm joined by Josh Nicholas, data journalist for Guardian Australia, to tell us what's going on. Welcome to The Crunch, Josh. Hi, nice to be here. So that increase in SUVs is pretty wild, Josh. Uh, what's, what's going on here? Yeah, so you can see that there's basically been a huge trend up. The SUVs used to be about 28% of new car sales. They're now over half in the last year. We haven't yet got all of 2023 data yet, but it's, the trend is basically still going. It's about 55%. Yeah, and that's all come at the expense of passenger vehicles, right? They've gone right down. Yeah, so passenger vehicles, which are things like Holden Commodores, Corollas, Falcons, that was less than 20% of new cars last year. Why is this? I mean, what's driving this, this huge shift? So there are a couple of things going on here. If you talk to someone who's just bought an SUV, they'll tell you things like they feel safer or they're easier to get in and out of, things like that. But there are also systematic things going on. There's tax perks, which incentivize some businesses to buy larger SUVs, larger cars. There's also regulations in other countries, like most of our cars are made overseas or by foreign companies. And when regulations in the US incentivize companies to build larger cars, that all trickles down to us. And then finally, we just don't have the emission standards that other countries have. So companies can sell cars in Australia that they can't sell in other countries. We've got this big increase in SUVs. So what does this mean for for safety with these bigger cars on the roads? There's been research done that shows that there's about 5% more road deaths than there would be if there were fewer large cars, if there were fewer large SUVs and utes and things like that. And that's because these vehicles, they weigh more and they're generally taller. And so when they hit things, they hit them harder. When they hit a pedestrian, for example, they tend to go over the pedestrian. There are more blind spots. There's also been research into the safety of the passengers inside the cars. And larger SUVs don't tend to do any better than the medium-sized SUVs. So some of that perception may not be right either. And then on top of all of this, they, they weigh more. And so the fuel efficiency isn't as good. Yeah. And just on emissions, our next chart shows the change in transport emissions for a bunch of countries over a 10-year period. So for Japan, UK, France, Sweden... Germany, Norway, the US, Canada, emissions have all gone down, but for Australia, they've gone up. That's right. And that increase, that 17% increase is going to make it really hard for us to hit our emissions reductions targets because transport is one of the largest categories of emissions that we have. And there's also been research that shows that if Australia bought cars in a similar fashion to the UK, cars and SUVs that our total emissions would come down about 17% as well, because we're right now about a quarter less efficient than the UK is. Yeah, wow, that's a, that's a huge difference. And it's not just the emissions either, right? It costs a bit more to fill up a bigger car. Yeah, these larger cars, these larger vehicles are costing us about $13 billion a year extra to fuel. Wow, that's quite a bit of pocket money. Thanks for joining us on The Crunch, Josh. Thanks for having me. That's all for The Crunch today. And if you'd like to stay up to date with new episodes, you can subscribe to our newsletter using the link below. If you'd like to support what we're doing, you can share episodes on your socials or drop us a like on YouTube. Thanks.